and welcome back. Now, on the workbench today, we have an Uno connected to a Bluetooth module here, and we have another Uno over here connected to another Bluetooth module. What am I doing? Well, I'm building a project, a slightly larger project than just this, but I need to use this exact situation. And whilst this is a very small part of the overall project that I'm doing, I thought, ah, oh, this could be a useful thing to tell you guys about, okay? So we're communicating serially via the Bluetooth modules. Did I say that right? And um, yeah, one's the initiator and one's the responder. That's the terminology we'll be using today. And it's pretty straightforward. We'll have a look on the whiteboard in just a second. JLC PCB offers custom PCBs with fast, reliable delivery. But today I want to talk about their SMT and PCB assembly from just $2. Let's have a look what that consists of, shall we? So as you can see here, the PCB and SMT assembly is available from $2. How do they do that? So normally there's a $7 setup fee, but in this case they're going to give you a voucher so you don't have to spend that money. Great. All you do is pay for your components. Simple. PCB SMT assembly from $2 from JLC PCB. Why don't you try them out now? And we'll also have a look at um, the sketches and these things here, look. Yeah, so we've got some things running. It's been running for, for a long time now. Um, because I need to send something for an initiator. So it won't be a full-blown Uno. It'll be a tiny little thing. But it will send it via Bluetooth to a responder so I have remote control. Now, I've, I've simplified yet further in this instance because... I only need one-way communication. So the initiator is going to send stuff to the responder, but the responder will not send anything back. It doesn't have to. Okay, there's no need for this to send anything back. And even if it did, what's this going to do with it, given that the thing I'm going to plug into here is, in fact, a Wii controller. Okay, so, yeah, it's, it's not going to do anything. Well, I suppose it could get a bit of feedback, I suppose. I never thought about that. But, uh, yeah, that's the way it's going to be. So... How simple is it to do this, and um, and what do we have to do to get these things talking to each other uh, in, a, in a meaningful manner? So you can just switch it on and they'll just pair up instantly and won't start connecting, for example, to my um, smartphone charger, which is also Bluetooth. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah. Okay, let's, let's whiz through this bit because the most complex bit is actually getting these talking, but even that is easy once you know, like everything else in the world, isn't it? And uh, this one here, you can just see this little orange wire here, this eagled eyes amongst you, will have seen that it's actually going in, look, just at the bottom of the picture, it's, it's actually soldered into pin 34, right at the top, the last pin, and it's um, sort of just hanging about at the minute. But we need that when we start setting these up to, you know, communicate and pair. It's a one-time Thing though and it's, it's it's straightforward right let's dive straight in what am i doing whiteboard come on bring it on so let's assume we've got two independent units one's in this case a nano that i've drawn and one a nuno because you might have say the nano positioned you know some way away with say a thermistor on it yeah a temperature controller perhaps a ds 1820b or whatever it is you want a dht 22 right uh, don't use a DHT11 outside, by the way, because it doesn't go below zero, as I found out the hard way. So you've got this, this thermometer thing out on a nano, all right? And you want the temperature to be displayed, like I'm showing here, but some way away. In your lounge, for example, might be good, not where this is being tucked up in, in the eaves or wherever you've put this. Now, what you could do, except it wouldn't work, is... Um, is uh, do all the business here to read this device every, you know, 10 seconds, whatever it is you're going to do. And then you could tr uh, send it via the serial port, serial.write or serial.print, from the TX down to the RX. Um, if this had to send back a reply, the TX will go from here to the RX here. Okay, so you can have a two-way conversation if you want. Exactly what this is going to do with any kind of reply mm, in this particular situation, perhaps we don't need that. And for my particular project, I don't need that two-way. It's a one-way. So this is the transmitter. So let's, let's just mark that as a TX or initiator. And this is the receiver or responder. So what I'm going to be doing is transmitting from here. 
uh, using that pin one down to this other uno remote uno uh, and receiving it on pin zero except a you don't want to use pins zero and one because they're the pins that you use when you upload a sketch so if you did this and then you think oh, i've just got to make a quick change to the sketch on here you'd actually have to disconnect these two wires otherwise it just it just wouldn't work you get that out of sync message you know when you get upload stuff so you don't really want to use uh, pin zero and one you want to use software serial and i'll show you how to do that and secondly how long can these bits of wire then realistically be even if you chose a really slow speed perhaps you chose 300 board which um you can probably get you know two three four meters maybe i mean i've never tried it that far on a workbench it's all a bit different isn't it really but it's wired isn't it it's wired so we don't really want any of that let's let's look at the way we are going to do it so my setup at the moment the one that's been running for many many hours now is this we have um, a nuno and a nano on one end connected to an hco5 bluetooth module and this is the the transmitter therefore the initiator because i'm only using one half of this transmission receiving leg so this is the unit that sends out stuff this is the receiving end so this is an hco5 as well but it could be an hco6 right which can only uh, act as a responder uh, and going into a, a Nuno that's some way away, up to, they say, 30 metres, which probably means five. No, no, I, I jest, I jest. Um, it's got a pretty good range, I've got to admit. I haven't tested at 30 metres. I do not live in the grounds of Windows, Windsor Palace. I have not got 30 metres at my disposal. Um, but I've done it for 10 metres and it's been rock solid. So, yeah, okay. Try it out, I guess. When you There are some higher power Bluetooth modules, actually. Um, I've not tested them out. So I can't comment, but you can get like 80 meters. Yeah. So wh what this is doing then, so this is this is transmitting that count you saw, right? So this is now being transmitted via Bluetooth to this one. This is receiving that count confusingly, and it is confusing. On the receiving end, we're actually connecting to the TX of this module because this is the module that's transmitting it back out into the uno and over here the transmitter i know it's this is sending it out into the rx because this is receiving that data and will send it out wirelessly yeah that caused a few fun and games i can tell you hmm. right so that's basically what what's happening and it's all pretty simple isn't it well okay this bit is getting this bit running with those two sketches and making sure you do connect up to the rx on the transmitter and the tx on the receiver yeah okay that's that's pretty straightforward it's just like having the tx rx two um, wire connection twisted though it's just the same and it works nicely that's not the tricky bit the tricky bit if you can call it that it's just a bit fiddly is to get these two paired up there's only a few commands um, but there's some gotchas in that so we'll look at that as well okay this is how we're going to set up the hco5s right and some of it applies to the hco6 easy for me to say um, but you really do need to look at the martin curry website which um, we'll have a brief look later but i'll put the links down below so what we've got here then is an hco5 which is the initiator connected up to a this is a cp20 no it's not it's a cp1202 serial to usb converter but over here i've got one as an ftdi which i tend to use more often i don't know why they both work just as well um the ftdi usb serial to converter does have a 3.3 volt and 5 volt selection on here which is useful for this because this whilst it will run on anything from 3 volts to 6 volts the um the receive and transmit pins are apparently a little bit sensitive and shouldn't be used above 3 volts now over here, the, I've actually got it plugged into a, a resistor network to reduce the 5 volts down to 3 volts, but then I stupidly plugged it into the 3 volt uh, setting on the CP1202 uh, USB to serial adapter, so it's only getting 3 volts to start with. So I might have to undo that again or plug it into the 5 volts, but whatever. It shows that you can do it very easily just with a couple of resistors. I'll, I'll show you that on the whiteboard. Right, in order that you don't blow up your HCO5 or HCO6, the RX pin is only 3 volt tolerant. Now, of course, the output from your Uno is going to be 5 volts. 
if you are running on a, an ESP8266 or whatever, that would be fine. You don't need any of this. They're all 3 volts anyway. But for an Uno, uh, it's a 5 volt output, so we need to put it through a 1K2 and then a 2K2. So at this junction here, it's 3 volts, and that's in to the receiver. Now, on the back of this HCR5, it does sort of indicate that the TX ought to be 3 volts as well. But given that this is an output, um, I think everybody, including me in this demo at least, just connects it directly up to the RX. Even though, strictly speaking, this pin here really is sort of 5 volts, isn't it? Even if it's an input, but no damage was done in my long overnight tests. Whether that's going to last for 50 years or whatever, I don't know. But that's what I would recommend, to be quite honest, doing it like this. Now, at the moment, they're, they're sitting there, um, not connected. This one's waiting for a connection because obviously I'm, I'm recording this video in backwards and forwards at the same time. So uh, we're, I've just recorded all the bits showing you how it works. This is now taking it to bits because I didn't want to damage it while I was doing that. So this is waiting for a connection. This is the receiver or responder. This one over here is the initiator. All right, but I've got this set to command mode. So there are two modes in which these units work. When you just plug them in normally, it goes, I'm running and I'm a bit like this one over here. I'm just waiting for something to connect to me or I'm trying to make a connection if you've told me to do that. It's not waiting for what are known as AT commands. Okay, so to make it run in command mode, so you can tell it, you know, change the port, change the name, go and look for a particular device, go and pair with the device, go and bind with it, link to it, all those things you have to do to sort of make these two talk together on a permanent basis, you have to do in command mode, uh, which normally you would do by press that button as you connect the power. So press the button, connect the power, just wait for a bit until it goes into a slow blink, as you can see there, and you're away. But as soon as you release that button, you're into half command mode. So if you go, what's your name? It goes, <laughs> not telling you, because you're in half command mode. So what you have to do, as I've done here, on pin 34, you, you solder on a little wire and connect that to uh, the plus VCC as well. I don't want to touch too much down here. It's this orange wire here. See this orange wire I'm holding? It actually goes right up to the board up here and it's just tacked on there. So I don't want to touch it because I know it's going to fall apart any second. It's only a, a temporary connection whilst we're doing all this command work. So I'm going to switch over now to the uh, command window where you can see what's happening. Now, just before we continue, um, I've just had a quick revamp of some of this because it's all getting a bit fragile and falling off. When I put it back together again, uh, this one's now got an FTDI on it as well. Just happened to be the one I picked up. And uh, so it's running off 5 volts. Now, this orange wire that's on pin 34 here is also now, the voltage on it has been divided by these two resistors up here to make sure that's no more than 3.3 volts. In fact, it's something like 2.8 I think it's still working though so apart from that nothing else has changed this is now in command mode by the slow blink you can see that and this one is in standard communication mode the very fast blinking here means it's waiting for something to connect to it so I'm not going to talk about this first because once we've gone through the commands on the initiator you'll see exactly how easy it is to do the responder although ironically it's this one we ought to do first Okay, let's have a look at the commands we need to enter. Now I'm using cool term here, this this serial monitor, but you can use the Arduino IDE. It's just not as clear what's going on, which is why I'm using this. Um, now, if you've got it in command mode, uh, the very first thing you need to do is type in AT. Now these commands could be in uppercase or lowercase. You tend to see them in uppercase, but lowercase works just fine. And for our purposes, it's easier for me to type in lowercase. So if you type in AT, and you are connected at 38400, remember, that's the communication speed. Um, hit enter, and as you can see at the top of the screen here, it says AT, yes, OK, we, we have established communication. Now I'm going to whiz through some of these commands because we'll find them summarised both in my GitHub and on Martin Curry's wonderful site, OK? Now the first thing I'm going to do is remove any previous pairings just to sort of clean the thing up really right so what we type in is our 80 plus rm aad and it says okay i've removed them all the next thing we do is say i want the role of this device to be an initiator so 80 plus role equals one 
and it says okay I'm now an initiator I can go and search for stuff if you tell me what to search for now after that you may need not always but you may need to do a reset just to get it into the right mode so we'll do that AT plus reset and because that pin 34 wire has been kept to VCC well 3 volts um, it should be okay I'll just go back into what command mode now as I said before you really ought to set the board rate for the programming to be the same as the command mode otherwise things get very awkward when you try and debug all this stuff and set your serial monitor up so this is how you set your uh, UART to 38400 there we are so that's all of the the preamble really now let's start to get on with the real thing right first of all I'm saying set this device to promiscuous mode which means we can talk to any device anywhere C mode of one this is okay we're now saying I, I'm going to set you the inquiry mode so when you go searching for other Bluetooth things I want you to search for up to five things in nine seconds and after that stop okay so that's what we're going to tell you to do and the next thing we have to do is an init and then now we should be able to inquire All right go and find something found one that is the one Shh, don't tell anyone after nine seconds it should come back with an okay there we are okay and that's all it could find now if you were in any doubt as to whether or not this was the one you're supposed to be um, pairing with you can do a query on the remote name that is the one that's waiting to be paired to you can say what's your name and this is what the command is right so this is the command to say the remote name that's the remote item you're trying to connect to with this address what's your name please and it comes back with there we are responder great that's what the one we're trying to connect to right so now we know we've got the right um, name and everything right now we're going to try and pair with that device and the last nine means within nine seconds please just thinking about it oh it says okay look at that excellent right that's just like pairing your headphones to the television though it's a one-time thing if you switched on your headphones again you might have to do it again so what we're going to do now is bind to that device um, set this, the mode the C mode so that only ever pairs against or connects to paired devices and finally we need to link to it I've got to be honest I don't know why we have to do a link if we've already paired and linked but I think this must be all part of the individual setup thinking about it oh and it's done and that is it right if we look at the desktop now now what you can see here is that um, instead of a very quick flashing it's now a double blink on both of these and they are in fact synchronized in their blinking so as as this is talking to this this is responding back now so that's it all done and dusted hmm okay quick a bit of a whirlwind thing isn't it but um, I'll show you the commands that you have to do now for the responder which we should have done first but it, you'll see why we did it this way so these are the commands you'd have to execute for the responder you need to do these first right before the ones we've just done but as you can see there's far fewer so it wouldn't have made sense so we just do an AT make sure we get an OK back set the board rate to the same as the programming rate set the name if you want I mean it's obviously not mandatory to do that just makes it a lot easier um, set the role clear any previously paired things set the mode do a reset and Bob's your uncle that's it so there's only a few commands there isn't there cool right so what we're gonna do is kill the power hello hello something something made a noise kill the power to this one take out the orange wire so it's no longer in command mode and it should then link to this one flashy flashy somebody link to me please mode all right and we'll see what happens so I'm going to kill the power all right that's the power gone to this one I'm touching take out that little orange wire that's connected to pin 34 over here to set it to command mode and now reset it up power it back right now hopefully this will stop blinky blinky so fast there we go and it's flash 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 and the other one there's my pointer over here should be doing the same I know that the video lights are quite bright today but so you can barely see it if I cover it there we are look blank flash flash oh yeah you get a blue one as well 
right so they're all connected now just bang every time you switch it on that's going to work right here we have two sketches then um, if you look at the top here the TX that's the transmitter or the initiator and the RX is the receiver or the responder so let's look at the TX first that's the initiator the thing sending out the data because we're only transmitting on one and receiving on the other so we only actually need one of the pins on the Bluetooth modules um, because we're not having a two-way conversation here but you could do it just be it's just easy in demo mode to show one so we're using software serial so we don't have to use pins zero and one on the Arduinos but you could do but then it means when you upload a sketch you've got a disconnect that's all a bit awkward isn't it so we tend to avoid that so we're using software serial the first number here is the um, receive pin and the second number here is the transmit pin. So this being the transmitter, we're actually transmitting on three and we're not actually doing anything on two uh, at all. Now here, you notice in the setup, there are two um, board rates here. Um, 38400 is the Bluetooth and we could talk about why we're keeping that as 38400 for all things Bluetooth. But the serial you know, debug window, this sort of stuff over here and, and this one here, both these, um, that's the serial monitor stuff and that's all at 9600 uh, and the loop is well simplicity itself really it's just a long counter and uh, when it's divisible by 10 we also send out to the receiver that if it was divisible by 10 and then the actual value now we're actually printing if you notice here we print as in text we're, we're going to send out the individual characters here d i v i and so on but the clever bit on this, of course, just like serial.print, this counter, although it's an unsigned long, so it's a four byte integer, um, the print converts it into the individual characters like you're seeing over here. Although this is in fact the receiving bit, the transmitting is over here. This is what we're sending out. So it's sending out each one of these individual characters as text. And then we're just delaying for a bit so we don't get thousands and thousands a second. So the receiver is just as simple. Once again, we're having a software serial on pins two and three. Now, in this case, of course, we're receiving on two. And should we wish to reply on three, we'd use pin three, but we're not actually sending anything back. Now, I'm using a, a buffer, a string here to receive all the data. So I'm reading it character by character and stuffing it in here. We'll see that in a minute. So the setup is exactly the same as the transmitter. We won't go through that again. And so what we're saying here now is if there's something available on the software serial port, that is the Bluetooth has, has got some data for us, we read one character at a time. We make sure it's not the carriage return character because that implies it's the end of the string. The print line over here would send a, a carriage return a new line back. So what we're saying here is if we've received a, a new uh, a carriage return, um, that means it's the end of the string, so we simply put a, a null marker into the buffer that we mentioned earlier, up here. All right, so we're going to put a null into that buffer to say that's the end of that string, so we don't have to clear it out with spaces and things, and then just say go and print it. Okay, so what we're, we're printing here is this stuff here. This is what you're looking at, the debugged lines. And uh, then we're just setting the index of that buffer down to zero again. Um, and if it's not a carriage return, we're saying, okay, well, as long as it's not a line feed as well, because the two characters will part of this you know, new line bit, um, just add it into the buffer. So we're creating the buffer. So if we, if I just pause this for a second, um, if we look at that string there, 118943, we receive the one first and put it into the buffer, then we receive another one, put it into the buffer, then the eight, nine, four, three, and so on. So the buffer contains all these characters, but we've not seen anything yet. Then after the three and invisible to us is the carriage return new line uh, sequence of, of the enter key effectively. So that's when this kicks in. It goes, ah, okay, because it comes in the orders 13, 10. So we've got a 13. That's when we'll print it out. We'll ignore the 10 and then continue with the next character. So it's just really a quick, very quick demo of doing all this. Okay. Um, right. And as you can see, this has been going, well, if you look over here, this has been connected now for 16 hours. I let it run overnight, really, just if it was stable and, you know, not going to blow up on me. So yeah, 16 hours worth, and it's got up to 119,000. In fact, if I move these closer together, you can see that 
actually that they're, they're like instant as it as it sends it it receives it i mean look that's the speed of light for the bluetooth modules of course you know the transmission quite amazing stuff isn't it really right okay so that's it then that, that is the code and i don't want to talk about that anymore i'll put it up into the github as normal now i know i always through this pretty quick but I'm going to link you to the Martin Curry website, and I'm going to show you that now because all these commands are on there. Right, this is Martin Curry's, um, well, he, he does a lot of stuff, right? Not just on HC05 and 06s, but he does a lot of Arduino stuff. Well, in fact, it says it there, look, mostly Arduino stuff. So this is how to pair by and link the two Bluetooth modules and exactly what I took my uh, instructions from. So he goes through in some detail probably more detail than me because I didn't need all that beginning bit but the bit I was talking to you about the binding it and pairing it and all that here we are it's all down here so you just read this and he's got screenshots and everything just bear in mind if you're typing stuff in there to that remote terminal and you yes you can use your Arduino serial port uh, monitor to do all this a little bit more awkward because you have to type it into that little thing at the top and then press send every time but you know if you haven't got anything else that would work um, if you mistype something and you can't correct it, then it will just go error zero. Don't know what you mean. Okay, if you get something else, if you're typing in something you think is correct and it goes error of 16 or something, have a look on this website because he's got a whole list of error codes somewhere, probably at the bottom of this page. And it's a long page, so I won't go there at the moment. Okay, so that's that bit and probably the most difficult part of it, to be quite honest. Yeah, thanks, Martin Curry. He obviously did a great job there because if I can follow it, I guess anybody can. Okay. Right, that brings an end to this little sort of mini project that I'm doing as part of the, the overall project. There we have the two windows showing you the, the transmissions between the two. This is live. These are actually running even now. And as you can see over here, it's now been up for um, 19 hours and 51 minutes. So, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing this is stable. Yeah, and of course, in due course, I'll be showing you the bigger project that I'm working on. And why would I want to connect one of these up to a Wii controller anyway? And it's not for playing games right okay that's it i'm going to put a few links down below for you know where you can buy this stuff and perhaps some interesting things about the h05 h06 especially martin curry's wonderful website that without that would all be floundering quite frankly because it's not something you do every day of the week is it this and when you do come back to it you think what do i do again i've got a vague idea of what to do uh, my thinking ends up i know i've got to type in at and i get an okay back and and then what so anyway have a look at that. If you ever need anything HC05, HC06, I have got those SPPC versions of these these devices, um, serial port protocol versions. That's what the SPP bit stands for. Um, but they haven't got a little button on, like I showed you. Um, and apparently you don't need it, but it was all a bit too long-winded to investigate that at the same time. That'll be for a future video. Okay, that's it. All done and dusted. If you think this was worth it, do give it a thumbs up. Let's YouTube know that it should recommend it to more people. Uh, comments down below. Gratefully received. I like having this sort of two-way conversation with you guys. And see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.